There are so many great songs sung by women that I want to karaoke. Um, we belong to we belong to each other. We belong. Welcome back to Nature League. It is the fourth week of the month, and that means it is time to have some fun right here on From A to B. And this month, as you know, has been all about sex and reproduction, so God help me. Adrian, what do you have for me today? The question that I wrote down, because I have to write down things as I think of them or else I'll forget, what I wrote down was, damn boy, you look good, said the ostrich. Okay, I'm gonna need more. Okay, so <laughs> that reminded me, it's an ostrich performing his mating dance okay. for uh, his human owner. Why would the ostrich be performing his mating dance for a human? Right. This all happened because you saw a video? Well, technically I heard the story first and then I watched the video, but the video is pretty great. If you haven't seen it, it's like... That was the human or the ostrich? <laughs> <laughs> That was the ostrich, and while I may look really weird doing it to you, out there there's some hot ostrich babes that are going like, hmm, yeah, somewhere somebody's doing a dance I like. It's funny that you made the, the sniffing for the female ostrich, but because you know if you're doing a crazy yeah. dance, what sense are you actually activating? It'd be a visual cue. Okay, yeah. So it's not look at you doing something weird and going, nice. <laughs> I just wanted to correct that briefly. Okay. All right. But, okay. So the males, I think it's called like, uh, cantling or contling, depends how you pronounce it, but K-A-N-T and then L-I-N-G. And that is that ostrich behavior, right? Of like doing the, the wings, like the plumage moving, the neck is going back and forth. Yeah. And so this is one of those things that is like, I am attracting the opposite sex for reproduction. Yeah. So it's weird, as you're saying, for there to have not been another member, opposite sex, just a human there. There were actually a team of researchers that looked into this. They were wondering because ostrich farming was becoming a thing and they're mm -hmm. like, um, we're having this thing where the ostriches are kind of trying to hit on us and we don't quite know what's going on. <laughs> this is in the UK. And so scientists are like, we'll check it out. <laughs> for science. Yeah, for science. Um, definitely for entertainment. And so <laughs> they like set up, a, I think the experiment set up was they looked at courtship behavior um, by male and female ostriches. Stritches. Stritches. So they set up female and male stritches and then observed courting behavior with and without humans. And these were all domesticated, so ones okay. that were raised on farm. Yeah. And what they saw is that them ostriches definitely hitting on them humans. <laughs> yeah! I know! I know! <laughs> so why? What right. on earth could, those, could that ostrich be attempting to get from the human. Sex is complicated for humans, like as a concept. Sure. Very complicated for humans. There's lots of things that we're attempting to get besides just sex. Just reproduction. Just reproduction, sure. correct. Could that also translate over into how non-human animals go about sex? So if that male ostrich is flirting with the humans around it, do you think that it's trying to get laid or do you think it's trying to use sex to maneuver itself to get more food, extra attention? Snuggles. Snuggles. It's using sex to be self-validated about its plumage and worth, yes. Wait, are you talking about me or the ostrich? <laughs> Definitely you. <laughs> mm, I'm on fire today. <laughs> Here's the thing, I will give this, you know, overarching uh, nota bene, if you will, in B. A what? In, nota bene, in B, like a, a good note, like let me add on and just say this so that it's said. Oh, As okay. a human, I can never actually know what an ostrich is thinking, and I don't want to say that I know. And so with any animal behavior, I think it's fair to first say that we can only do our best kind of guessing. Otherwise, we're, you know, speaking for them, and we shouldn't and we can't. The more you know. <laughs> Great. Da -da -da -da. So I'll give you some guesses. Two different things. It could either have some form of visual confusion about something like similarly heighted or like in its in its space that then it elicits the same response. And it's not that it knows that I'm about to create more young, but it might be these like fixed action patterns, which are just like behaviors that are innate and just happen. And so maybe there's something about the human's bearing, you know, the way that it stands, the way that its arms are, that makes that behavior occur. Behaviors can occur for so many different reasons, right? Do ostriches hunt or do they forage? Have you seen their feet. They're like velociraptor. Have you seen an ostrich? I kissed an emu once. Oh boy. All right. True story. 
kissed so, him, right, booped him right on the head. Then your question should have been, in the situation of me and an emu having a boop kiss, <laughs> was the emu trying to get anything besides reproduction? No, it was 100% going for the food in my hand. Okay, well hey, then there we go. But that's, but the, okay. I know, going for food is different than the sexual behavior. So another thing that could be happening is that for at least the male sex with the ostriches, some of that behavior can be male versus male. So like, I'm not only saying, hey ladies, I'm saying, yo bro, out of my space. Like there's competition and attraction it's occurring a, at the same time. It's a dance off. Yeah, not only are you like looking good for the ladies, you're also saying like, get out. Come at me, bruh. Right, and so again, because we can't speak for the stretches, it's possible that that behavior is actually something that's saying like, kind of get out of that space, right? Okay. This reminds me of a really cool bit that we should wrap up with, which is the concept of sexual dimorphism. And birds are such a good example of this. And so, do you need that word? Let's yes. Break, let's break it down. We're breaking it down, Never mind. Sexual, relating to sex, dimorphism, what's die? Two. And then morph? It's change. Kinda, I was like, what do the Power Rangers do? Yeah. Yeah, they change. Change, and it means shape. So like, sh okay. shape, morph, like which morph is this? So sexual dimorphism is saying that in terms of sex, so chromosomal sex, right, that there are two shapes. So, male, female? Yeah, exactly, male, female, chromosomally, right? Okay. And so not gender, but like chromosomal sex. Yeah. So with birds, you have a big, big difference between males and females, right? Think about a, a male peacock versus a female peacock. Female peacock, you're like, that's a boring chicken. Male peacock, <laughs> male peacock's like, glory, right? It's just this like yeah. massive difference. Yeah, okay. And so birds, because of that, that's evolved over a long, long, long time that males do the, these shows, these amazing displays, right? Either with color of plumage or the shape or the bigness or, or a dance, exactly. But it's all, it's all visual. Yeah, I mean, most of that for, for what we can understand. But I thought we'd have fun and maybe I ask you a question real quick, which is, have you ever been out and about and seen things on people that might be kind of equivalent to the to the plumage situation? I mean, when you go downtown, everybody's got on their plumage. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's trying to wear the thing or present themselves in a way that appeals to who they're trying to, you know, have sex with. Right. I know I get a lot of comments on the uh, the old yeah, yeah. And the glasses. I mean, if you left home time. without it, I I don't know. I can't tell you how many people are like nice Harry Potter glasses, and I'm like, his glasses are round. <laughs> so even in humans, we see like all kinds of interesting features that have to do with sexual selection, and we don't necessarily know who's in the room watching us. It might be an ostrich or other humans. So. For all we know, that ostrich who was doing the dance in the field might have thought he was in a bar with other ostriches and there just accidentally weren't any. Who knows? But it's cool looking at all the traits that you see. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this sexy adventure. On... <laughs> it's the most unsexy, sexy adventure in the world. But that's kind of the point. It's like <laughs> sex, sex is not necessarily for sexy. Sex can be for all kinds of things, right? Right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, We're excited to let you know that the next month's theme is adaptation. So make sure to come back next week and check out our lesson plan where we are going to dive on in. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.